So we've just seen the launch of a brand new DJI drone, and this is the DJI Air 3. Now, everything that I've seen so far suggests that this could be a really interesting and useful drone. And I'm sure absolutely many of you out there will be interested in seeing just how this performs against drones, such as the Mini 3 Pro, or indeed the Mavic 3 series, such as the Mavic 3 Classic. Now, whilst I'm not yet on DJI's Christmas card list, I will be having my drone delivered very shortly. Um, so I will be posting many reviews on this drone allowing you to be able to see if it's something you are interested in against the current fleet that I already have on the channel so if this is something you think you might be interested in watching please do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified when I do post my review videos now in the absence of having that drone what I'm going to be doing on this video is reviewing the brand new DJI flight app 1.11.0 and I've been out flying the DJI Mini 3 Pro and I'm going to give you all the information as to whether you should install it or not any new features and overall just the app stability so without further ado let's get into it so first of all, every time DJI launches a brand new drone, they have to update their DJI Flight app to go along with it to be able to support that particular uh, new model. Now, of course, that leaves the rest of us that don't have that drone wondering what exactly is new and what does it mean for you? Well, I will be completely honest with you, after going out and flying the DJI Mini 3 Pro, um, Basically, if I'm completely honest with you guys, it is bad news. Um, sometimes when DJI launch a new drone, it gives new features to other people that will revise the interface or something like that for the DJI Fly app. And unfortunately, I'm just gonna be honest with you, there's no new features. There's nothing new, there's nothing. However, well, I say there's no new features, there kind of is. Okay, so bear with me because I'm going to show you that in a little while. Basically, it is all to do with the video editing light cut app, okay, which basically DJI have revised to work with more products. And um, so it's quite cool and a new way. So if you are using the light cut app, you can easily connect to drones such as your DJI Mini 3 Pro um, or even your Mini 2 to be able to import all that cool stuff that you've recorded into the app for easy editing. So let's get on with the main part of checking if anything is new then. And yeah, I've already told you that there isn't. And as you can see on screen, uh, this pretty much is gonna look as familiar as anything else. Um, we've got revised get and expo settings, but then moved a few versions ago so if you are looking to control your gimbal uh, your speed and smoothness this is now where it's located because i do know that many of you have been messaging me uh, to say that you've lost those settings and you've not used a drone for a while well this is exactly where they are under this setting here and under the gain and expo so this is where you can adjust that apart from that looking through all the menus in the sub menus and everything else again like i said there's nothing new uh, but what we're going to do anyway is just take the drone out for a flight and just see how it performs so let's just start by flying straight off and many of you are going to have absolutely kittens at what i'm about to do um, but honestly guys flying over water is pretty much as safe as houses especially when you're flying at this sort of height remember for many of you that do have drone anxiety when it comes to flying over water the drone does not know whether it's over water or not as far as it's concerned it's in the air it's flying okay and the fact it's over water is utterly irrelevant i mean at the end of the day should anything happen and your drone crash or a propeller break or something like that the chances are if you're flying quite high if the drone falls from height yes if it falls in the water it's gone but pretty much it's going to be broken if it lands on hard land anyway so i really wouldn't worry about it guys and of course there is some absolutely epic shots to be had by flying over water so one of the things I always like to check when I am doing my DJI Flight App review videos is to make sure that quick shots are working as they should. Now, many of you do wonder why I do this test. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, it's purely because in previous versions of the DJI Flight App, for some bizarre reason, um, when they updated the app, many people out there when trying to select a subject, it just would not select. I don't know what DJI did, um, but it would not work. But I like to include it on my video so you can see it is working. Now, DJI did swiftly fix that in an update, um, but it's just become part of my review videos anyway. So basically, a little story while we're doing this little circle. Um, I work for a company called Casper Port Agency. I am a shipping agent. We have a sister company as part of uh, my company, and it is called Casper Chartering. And actually, uh, we operate our own ships, and this is actually one of our ships right here. It's called the MV Verity, and it's currently in MMS Drive. 
dry docking in hull for some essential repairs and overall maintenance. So I thought I'd just take some shots of this, which of course I can then send on to my sister company uh, for them publishing on their website, etc. etc. So continuing with this circle quick shot, you can see it has selected the subject and it's performed it absolutely fine. So let's just take a few photos and get some snaps, which of course we can edit later on it in apps such as Lightroom, for example, or Photoshop. Lightroom is a big favorite of mine um, simply for just applying some simple templates and it can just really improve the effects for your photos. And as you can see, it's performed absolutely fine. And one thing I will note as well is um, on this flight when I was flying along, I was noticing that my signal seemed incredibly strong today. Um, sometimes it does differ, but of course it is very important to make sure in the transmission tab, whether you are flying on 5.8 or 2.4, and making sure the drone has selected the right frequency for the area with which you are flying is incredibly important for maintaining a strong and reliable connection. So what I'm going to do now is just move everything along, and I always like to perform a simple return to home test, just to test the accuracy and making sure again the drone is doing as it should. Now one little thing is of course I am using the DJI Mini 3 Pro. It does not have precision landing. Um, precision landing is a feature on certain DJI drones or Altel drones for example where it effectively maps its position when it takes off okay uh, and it will generally return back to within a couple of inches. The Mini 3 Pro does not have that okay so you can expect it to be a little bit off sometimes even a meter or so but a Essentially, the way that I view return to home is simply a safety feature. If you do ever get lost or just lose your orientation or lose sight of the drone, which of course does happen, you know, everybody talks about visual line of sight, but of course it's important to also look at your screen to be able to see exactly what you're filming um, and obviously framing your shot. Okay, uh, so what I always say is in those scenarios, you can either use the return to home feature to get yourself home, okay, and as you get home, all you need to do is cancel return to home and land manually. Now, what you also can do is you can, if you do ever become a little bit lost or, you know, not quite sure of the location of your drone, all you simply need to do is open up the map in the bottom left corner. You can expand it by tapping on it and making it bigger so it switches screen with your camera view. And then you can see there is an orange line, and that is essentially guiding you all the way back to your home point. So all you need to do is wherever the orange line is heading, just follow that and it will get you all the way back to your home point. So that was a pretty successful flight. So let's just quickly show you the new additional option on the Light Cut app. So if we go into our photos and videos and then we click the create, what it's now going to do is it's now going to prompt you to open up the Light Cut app. Light Cut is essentially an app designed and built by DJI, okay? And it actually replaces the inbuilt app editor with which used to be within the DJI Fly app. They've now made it a separate entity. So if you don't already have it, you're going to need to go and get it. It. So previously, if you had the Light Cut app and the DJI Action 2, Action 3 or Mavic 3 series, all you needed to do was turn all those on, open up the Light Cut app. So what you could then do is connect to any of those three devices. And within the Light Cut app, you can download the footage you want to work with. And you can use Light Cut's built-in templates or video editor, basically to create something pretty cool. And I really am a fan of this. However, what is actually new over and above what you used to be able to do is it seems with this update, unless I've just not noticed, I'm only human, but now it pretty much supports everything. So it supports the Mini 3, the Mini 3 Pro, the Mini 2, the Pocket 2. Okay, so that's a huge, greater range of devices. So all you need to do is open up the Light Cut app, okay? It's going to tell us that it can see a DJI Mini 3 Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and click Connect. And then all we're going to do is when it prompts us, we're gonna press and hold the power button on our Mini 3 Pro you're gonna see that it connects. All of our files are there for us to be able to download, import, and edit as much as you want, okay? So that's a really nice cool feature that has also come. It's really bizarre that DJI uh, introduced these cool updates um, and don't really itemize them properly, leaving creators like myself to try and find them, okay? Um, and if you have not used Light Cut app before, I would really recommend it. I think it's a really great piece of kit. But overall, uh, this overall app experience uh, with the DJI Mini 3 Pro anyway, um, I think it's over overall absolutely perfectly fine to install. And of course, if you do have the DJI Air 3 or lucky enough to be getting one, you're going to need to run this app anyway, so it's nice to know it is running nice and stable. 
So if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm that more people just like you might like this video. If you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel if you're awesome and hit that bell notification to be notified of all my future videos just like this one. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.